I know you knew Tom, obviously, you know, when you were in New England and he came in, but now that you've been around him and watched him work at this stage of his career, is there anything that not necessarily surprised you, but it was heightened that, uh, that, that you've, you've, you know, observed of him? Well, no, you know, I kind of have to go back and remember, it's been a while since I was there in New England. Um, one thing that strikes me is that he doesn't look like he's any older. Um, he uh, actually, his arm looks stronger um, than what we saw last year um, on tape. Um, so it's, you know, his work ethic is just unbelievable. And, you know, he's such, we keep saying this word, but he sets such a high standard at that guys, you know, you find out if guys can keep up with it or if they're not quite ready. And um, I think everybody on this team wants to reach that standard. Um, you know, you've got some young guys that are learning on the fly here. So, um, but, you know, it's something, I think we said this when we signed him that, you know, whenever he's done, let's just say five years from now, um, that standard will uh, remain with this team. I think every team tries to go for it every year, right? You, you, you don't take a year off to try to win, but maybe this has presented some new opportunities. I mean, you got quarterbacks coming in here on a practice squad that wouldn't normally happen. Um, so hey, what's it been like, like sort of, you know, trying to compile what, what looks to be a, an all-star team almost? Well, we, it's, it's been great. There, there have been some opportunities that may not have been there in the past. I think, um, I think it's, it, that Tom has a lot to do with that, obviously, but I think we have a lot of good football players here um, on this team and that's why Tom probably chose us. Um, but um, it's, you know, we're taking it one day at a time. We're not crowning ourselves champions yet by any means. Cause you know, we, we still haven't seen our, our team go against anybody but our own selves. So, um, that's that's what makes week one very interesting, especially in, in in this day and age when we have no preseason games or scrimmages. But um, you know we've we've had some uh, made some moves. We had some uh, we which we thought were would have been good in any year. So um, you know I've got a lot of talent, but it takes more than talent to win. Okay, next is going to be Ira Kaufman. Hey Bruce, along those same lines in terms of Brady's impact, uh, Bruce specifically. Uh, what kind of role did Brady play in, in luring guys like McCoy, Fournette, obviously Gronkowski, maybe even Jason, maybe even Joe Haig. I think he signed the same day or maybe a day later that it was official that Brady was coming. So, Jason, uh, how important was Brady in that whole process? Well, yeah, he, he played, obviously, he and Gronk, um, you know, have a have a really strong bond. They're, they're very, very tight. So, I mean, to say that uh, – he didn't have anything to do with that would be absurd. Um, I think once again, I think a lot of players um, saw our team, saw how close we were despite the record last year um, in a lot of games and, um, you know, wanted to be a part of this. And if, if Tom Brady chooses the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they probably think to themselves, why not me? So um, yeah, he had a part in it. And, um, and I don't think he would take full credit if you asked him himself, but yeah, he definitely has a part in it. It's, you got to take advantage of it when you have, uh, when you have the goat. So in, in that way, Jason, he's, he's already paid uh, some, some big dividends. Yeah, he's paid some big div dividends in, in terms of also how he's showing these guys um, how to work, like we talked about earlier, and just how um, important it is to take care of your body, take care of your mind, take care of everything. And, you know, you put everything into it and you don't take anything for granted. So uh, there's a lot of lessons being learned here. Okay, next is going to be Jenna Lane. This team that, that you've assembled, you know, a few years ago, they were under the microscope with hard knocks and they had all these expectations and they were such a young team and, and you know, ultimately things didn't go their way that season. What kind of changes have you seen in some of these guys? Because uh, the core of your roster in many ways has still stayed the same. What changes have you seen in this group that, that leads you to believe that, you know what, maybe this time it's different. Maybe this time we can contend. You know, as these guys that we have on our team uh, get older, get a little bit more experienced, and, you know, you add some players like we've talked about with that have a lot of playoff and Super Bowl experience and rings, um, I think the confidence level just goes up. And when you've got a mature locker room, we've got, we've got a very diverse locker room. We have, yeah, we have – Tom Brady and Gronk and JPP and Levante who have been in the league quite a, quite a while, but we also have a lot of young players that are playing big roles for us too. But I think it's just the confidence level and, you know, expectations with a younger team. Sometimes you, 
you, you want to tamper them down a little bit. Well, with this group, I think expectations are, um, are welcome because, you know, everybody wants to live up to expectations, but they also know that when you, to live up to the expectations, you have to put in the work. So we, and we definitely have that type of unit right now in our, our entire locker room. As far as, is the, the running back position, right? Like, Ronald Jones, we keep hearing he's the guy, but you've also added some pieces to that and everything. Uh, I know Coach Arians has said that they're kind of still carving out roles for themselves, but how do you see that position ultimately shaking out? I mean, it's it's not a bad thing to be able to have a, a deep group of running backs, especially going into, say, a month like December, right? Teams that run the ball the best and play good defense in December usually go to the postseason. Yeah, I'm very excited about that group. Um, I think Shady um, has been such a good bell cow there in that room and leader and has embraced that role. Um, you know, Keyshawn really came on at the end of camp and really he's in a normal year, the amount of reps that he's gotten, it would he would just kind of be getting done with OTAs at this point. So then he missed a little bit of time here at training camp at the beginning too. So he's really coming into his own. But um, since we signed Leonard, who we're very excited about, um, Rojo has taken another step forward. And so he's welcomed the, the, the fact that we signed Leonard, who is an extremely talented guy. So it'll be fun to see how all this shakes out. But I'm very excited about that group. All right, next is Greg Allman. Hey, Jason, I know you're a little limited with the salary cap and flexibility there right now. But you do have uh, a number of uh, fairly big free agents coming up in the spring uh, in terms of guys like Chris Godwin and Levante David. I just want to ask you, whether you're still actively working on the potential of, of extending those guys or whether that's something you table uh, more until later or after the season? Normally, I don't talk about those things um, publicly, but uh, I, have, I have had conversations. And I don't ever put artificial deadlines as an organization. We don't on we need to have it, a deal done by, you know, Saturday of the first week of the season. Uh, these things can extend throughout the year. Um, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm very – happy that we want them to be on our team and they want to be on this team and usually um, there's a lot of optimism when you have those two things going on for you and going for you so I can't say when but um, we'll we'll absolutely we want both of those guys on our team for the long haul. Okay. from just from an organizational standpoint just want to ask you what the last six weeks have been like since this team got together for training camp and just just what you would credit for why things have gone uh, what seems like as smoothly as they have for this time. I'd say it starts with our head coach. Um, BA has been very, um, um, a lot, a lot of times you, they coaches get stuck on their, you know, needing to make their schedules and, and things get them off track a little bit. And it's hard to regroup because they're so focused on things. BA has been awesome in terms of knowing that things change every day. Things could change every day. We get new protocols, new memos every day. Things are changing. So, the way he's led our coaching staff and players has been has been outstanding. Um, the messages that he's given the players on "Don't be the guy that brings this whole thing down" um, have been really uh, uh, the players have have heard it, and everybody wants to have a special year this year. So, BA has done such a great job of just keeping everything on track despite the rough road that we have and all teams have right now. Next is going to be Ed and Cena. I know you've talked a lot about you know. The, the words expectations and standards and stuff like that is, is something that, that we've been talking about a lot the past few months. Um, you know, w- with Matt Gay, you know, obviously you put a, a lot of, of, of confidence in him last year and, and he had a, a, an odd kind of an up and down year, especially at the end there. Uh, what, what kind of, how tough was the decision-making process there to uh, obviously you had the competition, you brought in some guys and then ultimately you know, cut ties and, and, and go with, with the veteran and Ryan Sucka? Well, first of all, cutting any player is always tough. It's never fun. Um, so as soon as it becomes fun, then I'm in the wrong business. So it's, it's, it's tough. But, I mean, on one hand, it's, it's also when you think that you're going to be have a significant upgrade and um, going to have a chance to put your team in a place to uh, win more games, um, it's, a, it's an easy decision. So... Um, you know, you never know how it goes with these, with, with, with things, with signings, with players. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So, but right now we feel very good about uh, Ryan. Our last one's going to come from Scott Reynolds. Hey, Jason, uh, thanks for doing this. Just to follow up on kind of what Ed was talking about, I'm sure you want the kicking carousel to end. That's a position you've worked all avenues to try to solidify since you arrived in 2014. Uh, did it come down to Ryan Suckup just being 
a, a veteran and having that experience over Matt Gay in terms of kicking in this league and, and, and having that, that more of a proven commodity? Or was it just the individual battles that you saw in camp over the, the, the last couple of days that they were there kicking together? Well, it came down to consistency. And we want a consistent kicker. Now, Ryan last year was battled through, a, through an injury that he ended up having surgery on. But before that, you know, he was very consistent, you know, inside of 50. I think he has the NFL record for most kicks inside of 50. So, um, you know, we worked him out here and, and showed exactly what we thought he was on tape. Um, he's, a, he's a great guy in terms of he's uh, – it seems like he's got a great head on his shoulder and he can take the weight of the world on his shoulders um, at that position, which is very important. So we'll see how it goes. Um, don't have a crystal ball. I wish I would. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had a kicking problem here. Sure. And with, with Kilo Davis making the roster, he might possibly become a, a day three gem for you at some point. He's not the biggest uh, you know, defensive tackle. You've liked bigger defensive tackles. But can you speak to what you saw him in the pre-draft process and then what you like from him in training camp and uh, obviously enough for him to make your roster? Yeah, he brings an element um, to our D-line, uh, a little bit different element than the other guys, where he is just a very explosive, fast um, uh, high motor player. All of our players work very hard and, and have a big motor, but he's just an ex- brings an explosive element. Um, he, um, you know, he came in, he, he surprised us where he was in terms of picking up the playbook, um, being able to go out there right away, know what he's doing. And, you know, the guy can run. It's, it always helps when you have a 300 pound guy that runs a four, seven, five, we didn't draft him off the numbers, but, but the, uh, the numbers correlated to the way he played. 